So we have Dr. Balgos uh, online. I made him co-host. Uh, he's actually muted right now. I'm going to unmute him. Uh, Sir Boons, are you ready to give your talk or you need a couple more minutes to tell Dan? Well, yeah, I, I can just uh, share the screen. So that, okay. Uh, okay. So, Ma so Maima, let's uh, hold up on the Q&A for now so that we can hear uh, Dr. Balgos. So, Sir, people already mentioned this. So there are two uh, ventilators, locally made ventilators. We've already heard about the Austria event. The other one is the Ginhao event, and we have Dr. Balgos who, who developed uh, the Ginhao event. So Dr. Balgos, uh, pulmonologist, uh, he used to be one of my professors, uh, just like the people. So uh, Dr. Balgos, the floor is yours. Okay, uh, can you see the slide? Uh, no, I can still see you. How about now? Uh, I can see you. Okay, so while I'm, I'm working on it, uh, I just want to uh, briefly uh, mention that uh, the PGH pulmonary group has been uh, doing research on uh, and uh, making projects uh, related to uh, the manufacture of ventilators as early as the 1980s. And uh, Yep, you can see your screen now. If you can just put it in presentation mode, you're offset. There, yeah, perfect. You see it now? Yep, you're okay. all perfect. Thank you. So, uh, well, many of you are doctors, but I just uh, briefly want to show you that uh, we felt that there was a uh, felt need for ventilators early on because uh, as much as 50% uh, of ICU patients may need a ventilator, it was a uh, the demand or need for ventilators even before the pandemic. So in 1987, we already made uh, an ambulbag resuscitator together with some uh, uh, um, engineers from the UP College of Engineering. And in 1993, we shifted because of the felt uh, problems that we saw with the uh, angle bug uh, insulator to a uh, um, bug in a box model, uh, which was the basis for which we were able to get uh, funding from the QSD. And eventually in, in uh, 2012, we uh, were able to uh, uh, come up with this uh, initial uh, in our prototype, which was already a servo ventilator. Uh, there, uh, it was, however, uh, uh, lacking in um, some of the features that we wanted uh, because we wanted to put in uh, better uh, uh, features so that it can really be a truly servo ICO ventilator. And so this is what we envisioned. Uh, at that time, we were looking at the one breath uh, uh, ventilator that is being uh, uh, developed by Stanford, and uh, they were supposed to come up with it uh, also as a, uh, a low cost ventilator. And so uh, we initially just wanted uh, the basic ventilator settings of CMD, assist control, SIMD, CPAP, and P. Uh, but uh, as uh, we were pushing through with the, our development, 
uh, we have uh, actually improved and this is now our newest uh, prototype that is already going to undergo uh, uh, more detailed and uh, focused uh, fence testing. Uh, soon we will have the ASL 5000 simulator from Ingram, uh, from Ingmar I mean, uh, so that we will be able to simulate. So you can see here we're using the uh, test lung. Uh, Michigan uh, Instruments. The problem with the Michigan Instruments test lab is it does not simulate spontaneous breathing. Mm -hmm. So the main advantage that we will have once our ASL 5000 simulator comes within the next uh, three weeks is that we are we will be able to simulate uh, normal spontaneous breathing in various um, uh, chemical uh, clinical situations. So it can simulate um, uh, high compliance problems, low compliance problems, high resistance problems. So even the situation of the two types of uh, uh, failure in uh, uh, COVID-19 respiratory failure, we can actually simulate. So uh, at the stage that we're in now is that uh, we will be uh, going through the field studies uh, we were hoping to start it uh, this uh, August, but because of the delays in the procurement of parts, as well as the ASL 5000, we'll probably be able to do uh, more intensive uh, bench testing by the end of September and start our field study by the first or second week of October. So, uh, basically, what we're dealing with is uh, a portable, safe and effective compact uh, ventilator, which can be powered with uh, both AC and DC power. We made sure that uh, our battery will be uh, something that could last for eight hours, but we look, we're working on a battery that maybe could uh, be functional for at least 12 hours. Uh, the knobs uh, are, are very easy to operate and can be used for children and adults. Uh, because the tidal volume range is uh, between 100 ml to uh, 1,500 uh, ml. Uh, basically, what we envisioned before the pandemic was that the ventilator will be available for not only sale but rental or lease all options. And uh, we have incorporated in the software uh, self diagnostic cloud based data analytics so that our um, a maintenance and troubleshooting team would uh, follow up the function wherever in the Philippines it is uh, located for so long as there's an internet uh, connection and that will allow us to have full after sales maintenance and uh, also assure us of 24 7 parts replacement and repair services. So basically, this is uh, our uh, goal for the project in a nutshell. We were really targeting the government and small private hospitals who cannot afford the uh, expensive ICU ventilators that we have now, while giving the full uh, uh, ICU ventilator um, capabilities. So uh, we still have to look at uh, continuing research and development and best testing. Uh, we actually already are looking at a, a, a model that will have uh, graphics and uh, touch screen um, to, to show us the uh, uh, pressure and uh, other waves uh, so that uh, it will be easier for the ICU staff to monitor patients. Uh, this was a slide that I prepared around seven years ago and it was uh, you know uh, looking at the need for ventilators uh, for respiratory from failure from pandemics, even at that time. But the use of a small, low cost ventilator would be also useful as transport ventilators for home uh, use of uh, COPD patients and maybe for uh, those with the uh, traffic sleep apnea. So, this was basically our go to market strategy when we presented our. Uh, uh, project to the DOST as well as the AIM and uh, we are now at the stage where we are about to do field testing so we're still on track uh, 
but we still have to do a, a bit uh, more of surveys to the actual end users, so the criminologists and the intensities. And I think that's my last slide. Thank you for your kind attention. Okay, thank you very much for that great talk. I think um, these last um, speakers were really interesting for me to see where you see the ingenuity of the Filipino.